when he was in Montana, I said, Jeff, you're really happy out there, aren't you? And he said, yeah. He goes, but you know, Mom, so I can find something to be happy about wherever I am. That was his philosophy of life. When you think of Jeff, the first thing you think of is his smile. I can see him in my head right now. He was always smiling. Uh, he was very energetic, very kind, very loving, uh, always wanting to help someone. I mean, genuinely, really wanting to help people. The kindergarten teacher, I remember she told me, oh, he's wonderful. He's like a little pot of boiling water, which is exactly the best description for him. Hello, I'm Jeff. And see, I stick at the guitar, but I practice. I'd be walking down the hall and he would just see it in my face and he'd kind of stop and he'd go, Christy, it's okay. It's like it was never awkward or anything with him, ever. You can never make anything awkward. And I'm like, Jeff, where are you? Get in the city. He's like, oh, I'm playing floor hockey. I'm like, Jeff, we have a show in like three hours. He's like, oh, no, dude, it's, it's no, no worries, man. We'll, I'll be there. And you know, he always was. I'm drunk. 18 years old. He's breaking the law being here tonight. This is our entourage right now, driving in the city. This is a look of uh, what Monument has, to, like, what a member of Monument and half of Monument's entourage, because what it takes to we, get we, into the city. We, we, we. He had an overwhelming sense of music. In the end, uh, you know, when he decided to go to school, it was, uh, I was really happy, and I think that it was the best thing he could have done. College has is, is, is become a rite of passage. Jeff was on point, and uh, that was the definition of being on point. Was, would always like lecture us about how there's no reason why we can't ha get our work done and have an awesome time. He just he had a gift, you know. He had a gift, and he was just coming into his own. Oh, I think we were there for like three days. We were there definitely for Thanksgiving Day. Um, he called me at about 3:30. It was kind of late in the afternoon. There's a high school on my left and a cemetery on my right. Go left and. I said, you'll be in West Yellowstone in an hour. And I said, and then you're an hour from Bozeman. Heard a noise, I looked in my rear view mirror. I have no idea what to do. I'll show you. Well, it was done. Sunday, so it was the end of Thanksgiving weekend, yeah. and Jack was still home from college. My dad and I were watching a movie, and um, you know, I heard him knock on the door, and uh, there was a police officer. And I woke up to sounds I don't really like to hear, so I don't usually hear like anyone crying in my house. First, got a text message. Jesse came knocking on my door, opened my door, he's like, I was in my office and uh, I forget who it was that knocked on my door. When I think about that day, I think of it being completely gray. Like, it was monotone. Like, there was no color in the world. 19, 20 years old, and like, life can end, you know? Um, you feel invincible, and all your friends are invincible, and uh, it hit home, it did. He had his own perspective on things, and he was a very open-minded kid that... I'd talk to anybody and make them... Get him and get him to do stuff. To relate with him. Jeff was always good about that. He always liked to keep in touch with people. And we just started talking about music and about books. We hung out. Could anybody learn from Jeff's lifestyle? And the answer is, yeah. You know, like anybody, anybody who knew Jeff was changed by him. 
they just all connected with him, you know? He connected with everybody. He was special. Yeah.